We are live. Welcome to Portfolio Builders Friday Update. I'm anticipating a new trade alert this coming Wednesday. Had a lot of volatility this week. Wanted to let that calm down. Uh, continues to be very volatile markets, but the good news is the bond market seems to be uh, rebounding here, which is mainly what we're predicting. We just took a 305% profit on Boyle. And now I'm ready to bet essentially the exact opposite way for the coming six to 12 months. Our top selling investment advisory is now up 31% year to date. The S&P 500 is down 20% and the NASDAQ is down 30%. Last year, our high risk growth portfolio returned 233%. And it did with a very similar portfolio mix. The big change is we're going from being long energy to long bonds. We're essentially expecting a deacceleration of inflation uh, as we are entering a new paradigm in markets. So let's talk about how to get rich in 2022. This is the current asset allocation recommendation for a $10,000 portfolio. Uh, but as you note in your update, it says keep the boil position in cash, waiting for a significant pullback to pull the trigger on that. And it could take some time due to the conflict in Europe. And the US has just passed $40 billion in help uh, as it uh, looks like Russia is starting to make some progress. So we'll talk about that and more in today's update. Right now in a $10,000 portfolio, we've got 73 shares of UVXY. This has not been getting a big bid with the volatility. Uh, so investors are buying call options and not put options which is keeping the UVXY suppressed. So there could be more pain ahead, perhaps not. The main cause of the pain are shocking inflation prints that nobody anticipated that caused a severe bond market crash this year. We believe this bond market crash is over and that the single safest investment over the next 24 months will be TMF, right now 155 shares. Now, if interest rates are going to go down and we're not going to have bankruptcies and a Great Depression on our hand, which I do not think is the case, I don't think we're even heading into a recession yet. We'll look at that data. Uh, we want to be betting on the stock market going back up and especially Ethereum, our favorite growth technology asset, ETHE, 183 shares. It's trading at a great discount compared to the assets it holds. And finally, as you know, we sold Boyle at 114 bucks, almost at the top. It's staying sticky at 102. This position you sold for cash and it's still in cash. So about 42% of our portfolio uh, for high risk uh, over that is in cash. And we're getting ready to put that money to work. I'm confident I will make a decision finally on Wednesday. We've been waiting patiently and that patience may pay off. We'll talk about that in this presentation. So step one, pick up 73 shares of UVXY. Uh, there's a probability of more pain ahead. We really haven't seen a massive spike in the VIX. We have not resolved the supply chains from China. And the, the main problem keeping energy expensive uh, could be drawn out for a long time. So there's reason to be defensive in our portfolios. Uh, this chart shows you every time interest rates go above this range, uh, this channel, which has been heading down for 40 years, it's created different types of crises. So are we at the bottom of this current crisis or is there more pain ahead? We're prepared for either outcome with the diversified portfolio. Now in 2020, UVXY went up 1100% in a month. Now they're talking about a new uh, monkey pox spreading. Hopefully we don't get censored for saying it. I, I'm not sure if that will be the same impact as what we had in 2020. Uh, but regardless, uh, the key problem now are interest rates, energy costs, supply chains. And now we're starting to see margins compress for companies. So we're getting a re-rating of stocks uh, very broadly, as well as bonds. So UVXY went up 1100% in the last big sell-off and much of that profit was in the last two weeks of the of the sell-off so the first two weeks it only went up 300 percent the second two weeks and it's even less than two weeks uh really in this week and a half at the end of the crash it skyrocketed up uh another 700 percent so this is our crash insurance policy 
Uh, here's its chart for the year. And we've just been sitting on it. We haven't bought or sold any of our position. And I believe that most likely, uh, we're most likely near the bottom in stocks and should be looking to trim down UVXY, not add to it. Uh, but again, this market's been very volatile and hard to predict this year. So we're being patient and uh, realizing there could be more pain ahead. Step two, pick up treasuries, TMF, 155 shares. I believe we are at the bottom. Uh, TLT hit 112, far below the limit I believed was possible uh, without creating a massive, massive crash in markets. And we really have had a relatively slow decline in markets, not an absolute uh, capitulation. So TMF could go up for two reasons. Good reasons would be energy costs come down, supply chains get fixed in China, they reopen. Uh, and inventories start to, to sell into the market and the economy is still healthy, a Goldilocks situation. The other situation is the war escalates, China does not fix the supply chains and all hell breaks loose. Either outcome looks very good for, for treasuries. Uh, quite likely part of the trade alert next week will be to add to treasuries um, and maybe to FNGU. I'm not willing to buy the energy products unless I think something uh, extravagant and nasty is about to happen in Europe. Here's a look at the track record of the Federal Reserve being able to get the cost of energy down through financial tightening. Okay, so uh, they're just now starting the financial tightening. The bond market priced it in very quickly, uh, but due to the supply side getting screwed up with the European conflict, uh, the energy products are staying elevated. In the blue lines, what we can see are periods where the Federal Reserve tightened monetary policy. And what eventually occurred, not always immediately, but eventually was a significant decline in energy costs, which drove interest rates lower as well as energy costs. And that's what I think is essentially the big play to make a lot of money on in the next 12 to 24 months we may have to be patient for that to play out. The next month or two could remain sticky and elevated. Uh, but the rate of change is historical. It's a sigma three move. We've never seen bonds crash this hard and this long ever in history. And I do believe this is the single safest bet uh, for an easy profit over the next, uh, again, 12 to 24 months. Uh, before we likely bottom out in rates. Now, again, it could be for good or bad reasons. If you think it's for good reasons, I would actually want to add F and G U to the portfolio. Uh, if it's for bad reasons, I'd prefer to add to UVXY and more treasuries. Here's a look at that TMF product. Uh, so the recent high was in the 50s. I'm not so sure we'll get to that level unless uh, we get a massive deflationary shock to the economy and have an awful time passing more stimulus, uh, which could be the case if uh, the Republicans take over two branches of government, we go into gridlock and they suddenly slow down spending. Not so sure they are going to slow down that spending that much though. Uh, we're looking for a target probably in the 30 range. So we could be getting a very, very nice uh, triple digit return on TMF over the next 12 to 24 months. Uh, this is an old chart. Uh, but it essentially showed you the duration of the crash and the depth of the crash was historic. So there's blood on the streets in the bond market due to this inflationary spike. Uh, but my belief is inflation has spiked and it's going to slow down and fall here on out without more stimulus. And there's no appetite for aggressive stimulus and free money into the economy uh, right now. Here's all the ships stuck in China. Uh, messing up our supply chains. And so far, this is still stuck and holding everything back. This chart, we're looking at the credit impulse, uh, and then we're looking at import costs. And essentially, it predicts that we're going to have deflation over the next, again, 12 months. Now, China's starting to print money. It's going to slowly work its way back into the economy. Uh, but again, it is delayed. So we're looking for a pullback in energy costs over the next 12 months and falling interest rates, falling dollar and skyrocketing cryptocurrency prices. When we look at the, the map, the heat map of inflation, it's all stuck in one sector now. Uh, sure, we're seeing rising wages, we're seeing rising rent, 
Uh, but in general, everything is collapsing uh, except for energy costs. And again, the Fed has a 100% track record eventually of getting those energy costs to fall. So it's a tricky pickle we're heading to with energy because uh, there's just not enough supply. Their strategy will be to kill demand. Here's a look at the two-year treasury. A lot of people want to know why on earth you'd buy bonds when the Fed's going to hike interest rates. Well, here's what's important. Uh, the bond market has already priced in what the Fed will do for the next year or more. And so what we really want to do is focus on this two-year. It's going to predict when the Fed will stop hiking rates and start reducing rates. And so you can see it's already starting to top out. So in general, we believe the tightening process uh, will lead to lower interest rates, lower growth, and lower demand. Now, I'll on the opposite side of the figure, when the Fed is printing money and buying bonds, we're going to expect the, and, and lowering interest rates, we're actually going to expect the bond market to uh, to jack up interest rates. So whatever the Fed's doing, the bond market uh, is going to do way in advance. That's why we're long bonds. It's already priced in the move. Now, again, if interest rates are going to fall and we're not going to have lots of bankruptcies and collapses in the economy, uh, we believe your single best investment with the least risk and the greatest reward is Ethereum. ETHE is the ticker for the Grayscale Trust. Uh, here's a look at that chart. And again, ever since the bond market began to crash in December, it's taken down specifically tech companies with it the hardest. NASDAQ down 30%. Uh, ETHE just getting obliterated. And now it's actually trading 30% below its NAV. So if you looked at what this Grayscale Trust actually owns, uh, the stock's trading for 30% less than the assets. So it's a great buy, assuming they can close that discount window. Uh, here's a look at Ethereum long-term. I look at Ethereum as a ripoff of Windows. It's a platform to design software. And it is being used widely. It's got the fastest user growth in anything in history, faster than Bitcoin, faster than the internet. It's not going away. It's a very volatile asset by the dip. Had you bought it and held it through uh, the last collapse. So you could have bought it in 2017, watched it go up and then lose a massive amount of its value in the 18 crash. And if you did nothing but buy and hold, you're up 13,529% today. And we do see this going dramatically higher, probably no less than a 300 to 400% return in the next three to five years. This chart shows you the volatility and drawdowns of Bitcoin through the growth of this asset class. And what's critical is to see there's been less and less maximum drawdowns as this asset class has grown in size. So it's, it's hard to predict where the exact bottom will be I believe we are essentially there and it's going to be upside from here. Uh, this chart showing you the correlation to Bitcoin and the NASDAQ. Now, ever since they did the aggressive money printing after the lockdowns, it's been extremely correlated. Um, now this week we had a 5% drawdown in the NASDAQ and Bitcoin was only down four and a half percent. So we're actually seeing less volatility and better returns in Bitcoin than the NASDAQ now. And perhaps as this asset class grows, it become less and less correlated to tech companies, uh, which again, have fundamentally different dynamics in how they operate. Here's a look at the returns of Bitcoin each year. Uh, some of the greatest returns uh, in the history of any asset class are right here in this chart. It's had a few down years, but not many. And this chart says, don't look at the highs, look at the yearly lows. The only year that Bitcoin closed year, uh, lower year over year was in 2015. Every other year, uh, we've had higher and higher lows. Uh, also, it's been rare to see drawdowns for over seven weeks straight. And this goes for the stock market too. So from a statistic standpoint, uh, the probabilities of this continuing from here are very, very low. Uh, also, we've had a big volume spike, uh, which has also indicated potentially a bottom is in for crypto. So what else is going to drive cryptocurrencies higher? 
if the US is tightening financial conditions. And so uh, key to note, Japan is doing yield curve control, protecting their bond market at all costs. And the cost has been a massive devaluation of their currency. Now this is starting to turn. So we're starting to see uh, the, the Japanese yen go up against the dollar over the last few trading days after losing 17% of its value against the dollar uh, since last July. Uh, same thing's happening in China. They're starting to print aggressively and we're seeing this show up in their currency. Uh, so this will be good. Essentially what we want for cryptocurrencies to skyrocket is for DXY to fall. Now, uh, after the dot-com bubble, it fell from 120 to 70. If you're looking for Bitcoin to go to a million, that's the move that's going to make it happen. And we have all the right dynamics for this to occur, uh, which are basically massive twin deficits and a decaying uh, manufacturing center in the U.S. So the last decade with these remarkable returns, DXY actually went up. Just wait till we go into a decade of a declining dollar. That's when you're going to really clean up in cryptocurrencies. Step four, let's wait to buy Boil and NRGU. I want to see a big pullback uh, that surprises people to get back into this play. Um, and unfortunately, the conflict in Europe could make this drag out and potentially just trade sideways or slightly lower for quite some time. I'm not so sure we're going to see a big spike uh, of oil or natural gas going above these ranges we're in. So we got oil trading in the 100 to 120 range and natural gas in the seven to $8 range. Um, and I'm not confident we're gonna see a big spike from here. Uh, and remember what happened last summer, we had that surprise where everybody thought since we're reopening that those costs would go to new highs and the exact opposite occurred. Now, why are we at war? Well, this chart shows you. Uh, <laughs> And unfortunately, this situation is not progressing. Uh, we've now got the risk of more weapons lining up in Finland as they try to enter NATO. Um, so here's a look at natural gas with boil. And it's, a, it's at very, very ridiculous prices that are really not sustainable long-term. So I believe something's going to, to give and these costs are gonna come down. In general, I do see a five-year bull market in commodities, uh, but it's due for a, a pullback at this point. Uh, same thing for oil. So you can see it can get to these levels, but can it stay? Uh, not for long. Second, the conflict ends and China reopens. Uh, my favorite play is FNGU. It gives you two Chinese tech giants and it gives you the 10 big US companies uh, that get massive call options that seem to just drive those stock prices higher. Now remember when people are buying call options, it's forcing the other party to hedge uh, by essentially buying the stock. So F and GU, uh, I may put in our high risk portfolio with part of the purchase next week uh, as it's now at 740. So Wednesday's the day I'm gonna make decisions. I like treasuries and I like F and GU to add to our positioning. The last time the US tightened while China expanded credit and throw in Japan, uh, Bitcoin did really well. It went up 4,400% and the dollar fell at the end of that period uh, by about 10% on the DXY. And that gave you that skyrocketing uh, valuation in Bitcoin. Now, if you know what happens next, Bitcoin goes and crashes from 20,000 to 3,500. And this was led by interest rates going higher all the way to October, topping out at three and a half on the 10 year and eventually crashed the US stock market. I'm not predicting that we're gonna have higher interest rates. So I'm not anticipating uh, that we're about to have a bigger decline in cryptocurrencies. So critically watch our webinar every Monday and Friday. And if we need to, I'll do emergency webinar on Wednesday. And again, we're doing a trade alert Wednesday. So expect a webinar uh, to be ready for sell alerts. Now, if you're, catching this on YouTube, we have cut off all free trials through summer. You cannot have a free trial until August and you're not going to get the trade alerts. You're not going to know exactly what's happening unless you call Dean now and upgrade at 505-322-7515. Now, 
Uh, someone's complaining about the calculator. Yeah, so we're not going to edit the calculator till Wednesday. Um, it says in your emails and like every single calculator chart says boil is in cash. So I think that's pretty easy to understand. Um, there's no programming in it for a dollar position. So that's why we haven't changed it. Uh, so yeah, super easy. Just boils in cash. We're going to update it on Wednesday with the final call. Little patience goes a long ways in investing. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into our data. <laughs> Jeff, okay. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and look at our news feed and we'll go through charts. Okay, so we got this, uh, the World Health Organization's having emergency meeting with monkeypox. We'll see what comes of that. Uh, Russia has made some advances uh, in the war, uh, but still grinding slowly. Uh, some more key products used for tech companies, uh, essentially palladium uh, being held up out of Russia, uh, problematic for stocks. David Hunter has been predicting this massive bull market since the crash began. Everybody's been making fun of him, um, but perhaps he was a little early and perhaps uh, these points may actually play out. We're at or near an important inflection point in many markets. Rates have topped. Bonds look ready to run. USD appears poised for a big reversal to the downside. That's exactly what I anticipate at this point as well. Uh, here's a look at the uh, 2022 is breaking records as being one of the worst for investors and sentiment is understandably pessimistic. Uh, and so you can look at the uh, pessimism and it potentially predicting a low in the markets. Uh, Bitcoin weekly RSI at levels that have marked previous price bottoms, room to go lower, but will it? The Kobesi letter says VIX spikes in previous market crashes. Uh, 670% in 2020, 450 in 2018, 380 in 2015, uh, on and on. It says currently we're only at 130%. No bear market since 1929 has bottomed without at least a 200% spike in the VIX. Uh, now the VIX is controlled by put and call options. So everybody's buying call options and no one's buying put options. That's why UVXY is not spiking. JP Morgan, we estimate that household wealth in the form of debt, equity, and real estate has on net fallen by somewhere between five and eight trillion dollars. A wealth shock that is set to drag on growth in the coming year, which would make rates fall. Jeffrey Gunlack, less than two months ago, Biden said his sanctions against Russia would reduce the rubble, the ruble to rubble. Today, the ruble is at its strongest versus the euro since 2016 and the strongest against the dollar since 2018. Uh, here's some boom and bust companies. Boy, if you were betting on the lockdown companies that had been winning uh, to continue, um, like ARK Investments, for example, some pretty nasty returns from the high. Uh, so just looking at some of the devastating returns on these assets. Some massive dip buying from retail in the crypto markets, the second highest seven day increase in their holdings ever. Uh, also, we've been seeing whales buy up all this volatility as well. And yeah, crypto is looking very strong relative to everything else, all things considered. Before Thursday, they were there were three prior occasions when the S&P plunged 4% and then dropped again in the next day. The global financial crisis, the 2011 US downgrade, and the 2020 COVID crash. The Fed bailed out the market after each prior occasion. The S&P 500 is down 18.2% in the first 96 trading days of 2022, the worst start to the year since 1940. Um, now this is looking at the returns after these drawdowns, uh, and there's some pretty healthy returns in some of these years. Now in the Great Depression, uh, the pain didn't end. We ended up with a 47% decline. Top wheat exporters in the world. Russia represents 24%. Uh, 
so yeah, Russia can put pain on the entire world the longer this drags on. With just 43 positive days in the last 100, there hasn't been a lower frequency of positive days since the October 2008 uh, at the depth of the financial crisis. So we're at some very, very rare uh, things in bonds, stocks, crypto, everything. I believe we're due for a reversal. That's why we haven't been uh, dumping our stocks or cryptocurrencies. Um, BlackRock's $10 billion momentum ETF to rebalance out of tech for value and energy starting next week. Now, again, that's a tiny, tiny part of BlackRock's, uh, I think it's $6 trillion in assets. It uh, seems Russia's goal to, to end the war would be to seize Donetsk and Luhansk, and I may have mispronounced those, uh, but a lot less than what was expected initially. S&P 500 sinks 20% from January high, set to enter a bear market. Peter Zahan says, as a gentle reminder that not only does Russia outpopulate Ukraine three to one, Russia have not yet begun a general mobilization. Looks like Russia is starting to put its shoulder into this war uh, with mobilizing anyone over 40 to sign up. US sanctions Russia, rubble goes up against the dollar, oil goes up against the dollar and gold goes up against the bond market. Hmm, from Luke Groman. Uh, we've been having a lot of retail misses, Target, Walmart notably, and that's most likely what created the extreme volatility this week. Their earnings uh, were compressed by uh, inflation, essentially. For four decades, when inflation returned to the global economy, there was a deflationary event. 1986 oil crash, 1989 fall of the USSR, 1991 Japan bust, 1998 Asian contagion, 2001, China joins WTO, 2008, housing bust. Uh, so again, the whole point is the inflation is going to lead to a deflationary event. And that's where we see the big profit coming in and with a little patience here. Okay, that's the top news I want to cover. Here's a look at bonds over 40 years. Uh, you can see that it'll go up quickly and then fall uh, for a few years and then go up quickly and then fall for a few years. And that's exactly what I'm anticipate, anticipating about a two year falling yield play, uh, which will make TMF very, very profitable. Can it break to new highs? Uh, probably not without a crisis, uh, but can it give us a very beautiful return over the next 12 to 24 months? I, that's my highest conviction trade for us. Now, maybe not the highest total return trade, uh, but for a safe trade, absolutely. So most likely our safe growth strategy will be focusing on treasury buildup and our high risk portfolio uh, might dare to get into these extremely beat up tech companies uh, and uh, for a higher return potential with F and G uh, as it already has a pretty substantial bond position. Uh, same thing's happening in the bond market for houses. Uh, you can see the trend. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why these yields need to go lower over time. Otherwise, all hell breaks loose. Uh, we had the inverted yield curve on the two and 10. We did not have it on the three month and 10. So mixed signal from that. Uh, but in general, it's when it steepens that we wanna get worried about a recession coming. And so far it's, it's not steepening very quickly. Uh, if anything, it's flattening. And here's the yield curve. Okay, the bond market has already priced in what the Fed said it will do, which is raise by 50 basis points the next three meetings. Uh, what would probably piss off the bond market and stocks 
would be for them to come in and do 75 basis points. The probability of that happening at the June Fed meeting is at 8%. So very low likelihood uh, that the coming Fed meeting uh, will be negative for stocks or bonds. Uh, again, the bond markets already priced this in. Okay, we're not getting this big spike in UVXY because people are not freaking out and buying put options. They're buying call options. Um, so in general, that will make stocks go up the more people buy call options because the dealers selling the call option have to buy the underlying stock to hedge their risk. Reverse repo jumps to a new high, $1.987 trillion. Again, this could flood into markets uh, if the interest rates become more attractive on the front end, the super short-term duration uh, debt products. So that's a lot of money sitting on the sidelines. The gold to copper ratio uh, has gold going up at a faster rate than copper. They're both declining, uh, but copper's going down faster than gold. This is predicting lower yields. Here's a look at our energy favorites, Boil and NRGU. And I'm gonna be patient for this to pull back dramatically to get us back in. Most likely we will be dumping some treasuries for a big profit to go long, boil and NRGU. Uh, now boil, mostly interested in if the war is still going on this winter um, and NRGU uh, with, with any other reason to get long energy again. Uh, everybody's asking, uh, people are asking, should we buy Polygon? Uh, if you want to do that, I would recommend our private equity fund. So call Dean to get involved with that uh, so you can have an expert buying and securing your crypto for you. Uh, Peter says, are you looking at gold? Um, if we're going to start seeing a lot of layoffs, maybe. Uh, at this point, I still think we have a healthy economy and perhaps a Goldilocks situation ahead. Um, so not super big on gold and silver yet. Um, although you know we're looking at it daily. Okay, lumber futures are telling you, watch out, a sell-off in oil is coming. It warned us last May, it took about three months to play out. Um, I held through that, convinced energy costs were gonna go up and eventually they did. I don't wanna ignore all the data this time. I believe we have a high risk of energy costs falling uh, by the end of this year, uh, short-term. Now, again, I do see this being a long-term trade just a short-term pullback. Starting to see the dollar top and fall. This will be very important for our cryptocurrency position. Um, I believe we should be taking massive profits on crypto at 90. I'm not so convinced we're gonna see it crash to, uh, to 70 uh, like you did during the dot-com bubble. So the dot-com bubble, uh, the dollar crashed all the way to 71 from a high of 119 and uh, again, there's a lot of reasons why this dollar needs to come down. It's going to wreak havoc on bond markets in foreign countries because uh, their currency is devaluing it against the dollar, making the cost to service debt uh, very, very problematic. Um, so again, the key to this will most likely be bond yields falling and energy costs falling, uh, which means cryptocurrencies, tech stocks go up. Now, crypto does not have to worry about supply chains uh, and from for neon for the semiconductors. Uh, now Bitcoin again does use semiconductors. So in that respect, that cost for mining Bitcoin could go up. And if you're mining Bitcoin or Ethereum, you know for, for damn well, uh, those machines have gone up massively. Um, so that does impact them as well. Uh, but it's not like Foxconn getting shut down completely for Apple. Um, so, or Amazon not being able to get all its goods from China, or things of that nature. So a lot more risk uh, for tech companies that have outsourcing through China uh, or need key, uh, key metals from Russia to, to run their businesses. We're starting to see the Japanese yen and the Chinese yuan uh, roll over after devaluing and we're seeing the dollar fall. Uh, so that's really what we want to see here uh, for long cryptocurrencies. My three favorite cryptos are Bitcoin for the safest bet. We have that in the safe growth strategy. And we're starting to see less volatility in Bitcoin than the NASDAQ. Very promising. Second favorite is Ethereum. Uh, I relate that to Windows. You're buying Windows uh, or Microsoft very, very early in its 
uh, in its birth. Um, and then the, the most important application or add-on to Windows is Polygon uh, for Ethereum. And so you can see extreme outperformance in Polygon compared to Ethereum. Uh, there's no grayscale trust to buy Polygon in your stock account. Uh, so I think of Bitcoin as a better play than the NASDAQ. Um, I look at Ethereum as a more volatile play than the NASDAQ, perhaps two to three times the drawdown or return. Uh, Polygon is going to give you something like 10 times the return. So if you want a more leveraged product than the triple Q, uh, Polygon is where you do it. Now, Polygon is essentially the lightning network uh, for Bitcoin, but for Ethereum. And it's going to be very, very important to its success. It's just raised half a billion dollars. It has hundreds of programmers and it's integrating with many, many tech companies. So a lot of great growth ahead there. This chart, we're looking at the NASDAQ and the candlestick banks in the pink line below. Yellow are interest rates going up and then NRGU. Uh, this perhaps is the most concerning chart I can show you today that could be predicting more pain ahead in markets. The banks should be going up with rising rates, and they're not. Uh, the energy is, so mixed signal there. We would anticipate the NASDAQ going down with interest rates rising. So what would happen if interest rates fall from here? Will the banks go back up, perhaps, which would be an unusual correlation. This chart, we're comparing emerging markets to the S&P 500. Uh, and since December, they've been highly correlated, almost the exact same return. Now, if we do get a weakening dollar, the last time we had a weakening dollar that was significant uh, was this period. And this is what Jeffrey Gunlack and Ray Daly are both predicting. You're gonna make a lot more money in emerging markets this coming decade uh, than you do in the S&P 500. And so the last time we had that weakening dollar uh, was after the dot-com bubble and you got a 400% return in emerging markets compared to a 69% return in the S&P 500. As you know, in the safe growth strategy, we have exposure to emerging markets with ticker EDC. Um, so not planning to change that. Uh, for the high risk strategy, we don't have any emerging markets exposure. Once we add FNGU, we will. We'll have uh, Alibaba and Baidu, two of their uh, greater companies. Now, my two favorite Chinese companies are Alibaba and Tencent. Tencent's only in the EDC product, uh, but with US companies so beat up um, and being the focus of call option buying, I'll most likely focus on F and G for high risk rather than EDC. We're looking at these three companies, Taiwan Semiconductors, Alibaba, and Tencent. Uh, we're looking for big bids that are consistent to predict that uh, the bear market for emerging markets is over and to potentially get more aggressive. Uh, so far, it's just trading uh, down like everything else. Okay, here's the European index. This is one of the better buys on uh, in terms of earnings relative to the cost per share, uh, but the whole continent is in disarray due to the conflict. Um, we have a small position, smallest position we have is in fact uh, in this uh, European index for the safe growth strategy. And again, the, the primary strategy for safe growth is to have an extremely diversified portfolio uh, and not be focused on concentrated bets that could potentially uh, have really big or really uh, big wins or losses for the portfolio. Now, long-term, we're very bullish on rare earth metals, REMX, and some uh, Plays that are similar to it are uranium, URA, and copper miners. And so we've seen these get hit here. Now, if tech's going back up, uh, quite likely these will as well. Uh, they almost act the opposite of oil, which is quite interesting. So they're more of the inflation hedge for tech companies. This chart, we're looking at gold and silver. Um, I believe there's a risk of strong jobs growth over the rest of the year. Uh, 10 million jobs, half a million workers, and the Fed has made all the people who thought they could just live on their trading profits uh, evapor evaporate, so they're quite likely to go back to work. So unless we're seeing companies start to do massive layoffs, I'm not so sure I'm going to be putting us into silver or gold anytime soon. 
this was what our prediction was. Interest uh, inflation would start to fall. Uh, and it's going to be falling a little slower than we hoped due to the sticky food and energy inflation. Um, so as long as this is falling at a decent pace, I believe the end of the bond market route is over and our positioning will remain intact. Now, what would surprise me is if this were to trade flat uh, or up and we'd have to reevaluate our expectation of deflation coming in. Now, remember, this is excluding food and energy, the two worst inflation components currently. Uh, here's the jobs, they keep rolling in. Uh, very strong jobs growth. And with the crash in uh, a lot of different assets, people have lost that wealth, they must go back to work very soon. Labor force participation rates been rising. It's not back to the, uh, the lockdown era. Jeffrey Gunlack says, perhaps it won't. Uh, there's a lot of people who are really just stealing and making a living from that. And a lot of laws protecting these people so they can get away with it. Uh, so fascinating, we'll keep a close eye on this. A little bit of a pullback, but in general, uh, people are going back to work and the labor force participation rate is rising. Uh, bank credit continues to grow, uh, biggest growth month over month. Consumer credit just grew. So I don't see the economy falling off a cliff right now. Our margins compressing due to inflation, sure, but we're expecting the inflation to slow down here. So the, the pain could very well be uh, very, very close to the end for stocks and cryptocurrencies, as well as the bond market, which is already starting to rise in terms of lower rates. Okay, rate uh, retail sales grew last month and we hit a new record in consumer spending. Were the profit margins lower? Sure. Uh, but to say the economy is dying right now, uh, very hard to make that argument. We just had a record of imports at a negative $110 billion trade deficit. Again, this is critical for predicting a lower dollar over time, accompanied with massive trillion dollar plus deficits. Housing sales slowed down, uh, but they're still at very remarkable levels. So uh, we're just not seeing a reason to think we're on the verge of some sort of collapse. China, on the other hand, PMI went to below 40 at 37. That is scary. Um, and it's due to this massive lockdown they've imposed on themselves for two months. They're not going to be able to keep this up. Otherwise, there will be a billion plus pissed off people revolting against the government. Now, their exports have been falling, but still, they're way above trend. And same thing for their imports. To hit their 5.5% GDP target, they're going to have to start massively printing money uh, to close out the year. And uh, so that's how they hit their targets. Here's a review of the Fed, 2016 to 2018, they were hiking rates. They were not doing quantitative tightening. 2018, uh, they did quantitative tightening. And that means they sold assets. In 2018, bond rates went up until October, causing a big crash in all assets until the Fed reversed course and as you can see, started printing money like crazy. Um, so they're doing tightening and rate hikes right now, but the bond market priced it in uh, very fast. So I don't see any more downside in bonds unless energy costs go dramatically higher from here, which I think is most likely not going to happen. Um, here is the European Central Bank still printing their little hearts out. Okay, very good. So this is where uh, the teaser ends. If you're not a paid member, you better upgrade and call Dean so you don't miss our trade alert coming this Wednesday at 505-322-7515.